So here we've got a problem request over a 3D statics problem. We're giving this force F2 with two angles and we're given the force F1 and we are trying to find the magnitude of the force F3 and the direction that it points. Before I do that let's rename these forces because we're going to be dealing with a lot of subscripts here since we're dealing with components. We'll call this A. F2 is A. F1 is B and F3 is C. Now just looking at this I know my biggest problem is going to be our force A because this one doesn't point in any of the uh, coordinate directions while F1 points in just the X direction and F3 is unknown so we don't have to deal with it until later. Over here I've created a better view of our pesky vector A and I moved our coordinate system down so that we could see it coming from the top corner and then close it inside of this 3D box to give us a better view. The first thing I'm going to do is project our A vector onto this XY plane here. and I'm going to label this AS for the shadow of A. Now I'm going to draw my Y component along the edge here to give us a better geometrical view of our vector so we can start to break it down into its components. And so this is just AX here and this is AY. And I'll for good measure draw the shadow component up above as well. Now we can start to place the angles that we're given in here too. And so the first one is our 40 degrees in the XY plane. This is the dark blue region angle. So that would be right here. And we'll call that theta. Now our second one in the light blue region is the angle between A and the XY plane. And so that's at this angle here and we'll call it phi. And that's equal to 30 degrees. Now if we were to look into this triangle here that we've created, not into the ZY plane, but perpendicular to this face here, we would see this triangle, where this is A, and this is our shadow vector, AS, this is AZ. And we know this angle is phi because of the Z rule. and this is a 90 degree angle. So we can use SOHCAHTOA where we know the hypotenuse and we want to know either the opposite or adjacent. So say that we want to know the opposite, then we have sine theta, or in this case phi equals opposite over hypotenuse, which is AZ over A. And rearranging, we can find AZ. And the same works for the adjacent leg where we use cut out of SOHCAHTOA, so cos phi equals adjacent leg over hypotenuse equals AS over A. Now rearranging we can find AS equals A cos phi. Now we can look up from an eagle's eye view onto the XY plane and see this triangle formed here between AY, AX, and AS. So drawing this out to the side, it's a right triangle. We know that this angle here is theta given to us. And we just solved for this AS previously, so we can follow the same procedure with SOHCAHTOA and find the adjacent leg and the opposite leg. We're given A equals 300 pounds, so now we can just plug in the values and find that AS equals 259.8. And anytime you're working with trig functions, make sure that your calculator is in the right mode, in this case degrees. AZ comes out to 150. AY equals 199 and AX equals 167. With our components found, we can start to balance our equations. Notice I've put our solved components here and that AZ is positive because in our diagram we have AZ pointing downward. We'll start with the X direction. We have AX going in the positive direction 
our B points this way in the negative x direction and our C is unknown so it can go off wherever. So we subtract off B and we add the x component of C. And that's because C is pointing in positive directions in x, y, and z. And I did that because it's unknown and I think it's a good practice to make your unknown forces that don't have a certain direction established yet uh, go in the positive direction in, in all the coordinates. So this is all equal to zero because this is a statics course. Now for the forces in the y direction, we have our AY. There is no B, and we add our CY again. Then for the Z direction, here we need to be sure to subtract off AZ. Always be checking back at your uh, force diagram to make sure that you're getting your directions right. There's no B again, and we add our unknown CZ, all equal to zero. After that, we plug and chug. Rearrange the first equation in the x direction. C actually equals B minus AX, which is equal to so 180 minus our 167. We're left with 13. In the y direction, we have CY equals negative AY. So our y component of our unknown vector is negative 199. And lastly, for the z-direction, cz equals az, just 150. When you have the components of a vector, we can use Pythagorean's theorem to find the magnitude. Well, on the 3D plane, it's no different. You just have an extra component. And so we can find the magnitude of c by taking the square root of each of the components squared. So cx squared plus cy squared plus cz squared which is equal to the square root of 13 squared plus negative 199 squared plus 150 squared. Plugging in the calculator gives us a total force of 250 pounds. Now all that's left to do is find the angle between C and each of our coordinate directions. Now to do this we're going to use an equation for the dot product of two vectors. So if we have A and B as vectors, the dot product is equivalent to the magnitude of each of those vectors multiplied by cosine of theta. What we can do is take our C vector and multiply it by one of the coordinate direction unit vectors, so say we use x here, because now we have the magnitude of c, and the magnitude of the unit vector is just 1, and then we can solve for this angle theta, and do that for all of our coordinate directions. So for example, our c vector has the components 13 for x, negative 199 for y, and 150 for z. And then the unit vector in the x direction is a 1 in the x place and then 0 for y, 0 for z. And then that equals 250 for our magnitude of c cos theta. So now we have one unknown and one equation. When you do dot products between vectors you multiply the components and then add them together. So we have 13 times 1 plus negative 199 times 0 plus 150 times 0. So we're left with just 13. And this equals 250 times cos theta. Rearranging, we have inverse cosine of our small component over the magnitude. And this is for x. And this angle is equivalent to, and this angle comes out to 87 degrees. And the prestige stays the same for each of the directions. We stick with cosine. So for y, we have cosine the y component of our vector which is negative 199 and this is important be sure to include the negative in this equation otherwise it's going to give you a different angle so that's over 250 and this gives us 142.75 degrees I'm gonna write this down too so that you don't forget be sure to include the negative for finding angles 
Lastly, we find z doing inverse cosine of the z component 150 over 250, which comes out to 53.1. And there we have our final answer. You know, solving the 3D vector problem this way is a lot better than how the solution shows it because you can apply these steps to any of the problems and it's very procedural. And so you go from start to finish following the same steps. And I'm, I'm hoping that you can see those steps and apply it. But if not, let us know where you're iffy or if you have any more questions you'd like us to solve. Well, good luck on your tests and I hope this helped.